Serious Survivor here. And I want to discuss a little bit the warning that the Department of Homeland Security issued. But first, a quick word from our sponsors. What if I tell you, you can get your hands on some of the gold from one of the, if not the most important shipwrecks in our history. It serves as a snapshot of America's most historic era, the California Gold Rush. It is the biggest contributor to the Panic of 1857. And no, it's not the Titanic. It's the SS Central America, known as the Ship of Gold. It sank in 1857, where it stayed for more than 160 years. Now you can own coins recovered from it. Each coin has a unique recovery number and comes in a quality display box with a certificate of authenticity. Getting these incomparable pieces of history into your hands from the deep took years of courtroom battles about ownership. What are you waiting for? These coins are not just a piece of investment, it's a piece of our history. And with free, speedy shipping, you need to call Noble Gold right now at 877-646-5347. And that's 877-646-5347 because they'll go quicker than a Jeff Bezos space flight. It's a terror warning that appears to put Americans who are pushing back against COVID-19 restrictions on the same level as jihadists who might strike on the anniversary of the September 11th attacks. Put the document on the screen here for those that haven't read it. I'm not going to read the whole thing, so I encourage you to read it to yourself. But a DHS bulletin published on Friday said that the anti-government, anti-authority, violent extremists may try to exploit the emergence of COVID-19 variants by viewing the political reestablishment of public health restrictions across the U.S. as a rationale to conduct attacks. This is absolutely absurd. And what's so ridiculous about it, what is so ridiculous about it, is the people that are being labeled as the threats here people who don't want the vaccine, people who uh, are against lockdowns. Since this began, people who have defied these orders or people who do not agree with these orders, we have made our voices heard, but we haven't become violent extremists. And what's really ironic about this is the fact that there's no mention of the groups that burn and loot our cities that still continue to some degree, but continued all last year. And that was definitely treated with kid gloves on. This document here is clearly pointing a finger at those people who do not fall for a lot of the restrictions that are attempting to be placed on us. And these people that do not agree with the government's restrictions, we're making our voices heard. We're calling our congressmen like that's going to do any good, but we're doing the steps that we're supposed to do to oppose these types of lockdowns or types of restrictions. And it's not that we're burning down cities. No one's burning down cities on this front. The city's burning. You push that to the side last year. And as a matter of fact, it seemed to be encouraged by the left-wing extremists themselves. But as citizens, we've had to watch our nation fall apart. And we've had to watch not just our cities burn, but our children suffer through all this. And we've seen the impact that it's having on our children. Most of these politicians who have kids probably don't even see their kids that much. And that's just the truth. They're off doing their job, off doing whatever. And their kids are being raised by nannies and in a private school somewhere. Our children had to face the same thing that the other citizens of the United States were being held accountable to. And we had to face the same restrictions, the same types of lockdowns. But yet we did. And we didn't burn down cities. And we didn't loot and steal. We simply made our voices heard. And now the powers that be are labeling these groups that don't necessarily agree with the restrictions and a lot of the other activities from the COVID-19 pandemic. A lot of people don't agree with what's been going on, but that doesn't mean we're a terrorist threat. This is absolutely ridiculous that they would even publish something like this and include violent extremists who disagree with the COVID-19 lockdowns in there. And uh, just a really short video, I just wanted to express my opinion on that. I encourage you to read the article that you see on the screen here. Um, it's, you know, it's to the point to where we're labeled as the terrorists simply because we want to exercise our right to free speech, the same free speech that the left has. They can speak freely all they want, but when we speak freely, suddenly there's something wrong with what we're saying and we're extremists. So this is not something that's going to go away either, and we know this. And it wouldn't surprise me to see something happen, to see a false flag of some type, uh, to push more blame onto those who do not agree with what's going on around us. 
And with the societal strains and tensions that we see right now, it really wouldn't surprise me to see something happen. So I guess the real question is, is, is are we prepared? And we have to make sure that we're prepared, not just with physical items, but also mentally. Now this terrorism warning runs through November 11th and it talked about other potential threats including violent bigots who may perpetrate mass casualty attacks. It does go on to say though there are currently no credible or imminent threats identified. So once again what this is doing is not so much an action against people but it's changing other people's thought processes towards those who do not fall for some of the restrictions that are being placed. It changes people's perceptions, and that's the whole idea of this. This is more subliminal than anything else, in my opinion. What this mean, what I mean by that is, they're trying to make people who read this connect the dots in their mind between violent extremism, terrorism, and those who do not agree with the restrictions and with some of the guidelines that have been placed out there. So they're grouping us together. Not that they're going to do anything from this, this here article. I don't believe they're going to do anything to anybody yet, but it's another step, another cog in that gear, in that machine that they're building that's putting us, those who don't believe everything we're told, is putting us in the same category with known terrorists. And that's been happening a lot. And as that continues to happen, people are going to start to believe this. And it's going to change the way of thinking for a lot of people when they realize that you may not agree with what's going on with the uh, pandemic. So they're automatically going to think that you're an extremist. And it's only a matter of time before there starts to be rewards out for turning people in who may be domestic violent extremists, in quotes, or ideologically motivated, in quotes. And one last quote for the document, law enforcement have expressed concerns that the broader sharing of false narratives and conspiracy theories will gain traction in mainstream environments, resulting in individuals or small groups embracing violent attacks to achieve their desired objectives. Like I said, this is, this is putting us into that category. It's putting people who don't believe all of this into that category. And once we're in that category, and now they're grouping us there, once the rest of America looks at it the same way, then we will be treated as terrorists. Now, this is just another step in their plan. But I encourage you to read the document if you haven't already, because this is uh, another instance of those who don't agree with what the left is saying. In this case, we're being labeled as actual terrorists. Well, that's it for now. Thanks a lot for watching. God bless. Serious Survivor, out.